So back in the winter of 2006, me and my brother both put college on hold to move back in with my mom at her condo. She'd been diagnosed with breast cancer and needed people to take care of her, so we just basically dropped everything to help her out. The story isn't about that though, and as sad as it was, she's since made a full recovery. Anyway, this one night I was sitting at my computer, and this is right in the middle of the whole cancer thing, so I was horrifically depressed. I was listening to super sad music, generally just being all emo, which I'm sure you can understand, and then all of a sudden, my mom came into the room. Out of nowhere, she's all annoyed, asking me why I was making so much noise for. But apart from the music I was listening to, which was sad and not loud at all, I wasn't making any noise at all. That's when she looked over my shoulder, just about grabbed her chest with this shock look on her face, and screams, What are you doing? Now, you have to understand... My old room has these sliding glass windows that lead to a flat rooftop that was shared with basically all the other condos on one side of the street. So, if a person wanted, they could climb up at the end of the street then walk along the flat roofs and just climb in any window you wanted. And that's exactly what some total psycho had decided to do. I turned and saw a man in a hoodie looking into my window and when my mom shouted at him, He looked incredibly shocked and then disappeared from view. My mom is racked with pain at this point, but she still ran out over to the window, pulled it up, and then started screaming out like, Get lost or I'll call the cops. Don't ever come back here. It was all pretty shocking at the time, as you can imagine, but I was just glad my mom had caught the guy before he climbed into my window or whatever. It wasn't until later that I realized that He could have been sat there for literally any amount of time, just staring at me as I sat there, depressed, while listening to the music. That's when I went from being a little freaked out to absolutely horrified, because you know when people say, I got a feeling I was being watched, things like that, like there's a kind of ESP that tells you when someone is watching you? No, not real at all, not in my case anyway. Someone can be staring at the back of your head for God knows how long and you have absolutely no idea, at least for me. Anyway, we called the cops and they basically did next to nothing. But thinking about it, besides posting a cop outside my window 24-7, there was nothing much they actually could do. Best they could do was to advise us to lock the windows and keep a bar across them in case they tried to break in. And we did just that but I also decided to start keeping my knife by my bed that was within view of the window, and that was literally the only way I could manage to get some sleep there. The guy never did come back, but for the longest time I'd look at my window and just imagine the guy's face staring back at me. I rearranged the setup in my room too so it could never happen again, so no one would ever be able to watch me without me knowing. This happened a long time ago. At the time, I was living alone in a first floor apartment. My girlfriend had been sick at the time and ended up in the hospital dealing with a very rare disease. She recovered fine from it, but during those weeks, my life was pretty much go to work, go to the hospital to be with her, come back to the house for dinner, and then bed. It was a Friday night and I was alone, so I decided to distract myself by reading and watching some videos on YouTube. Hours passed, and at 3 a.m. I was in bed with my iPad in my hand almost falling asleep. Then I heard it. I knew that sound pretty well. You see, outside, right in front of my bedroom door, there was a long corridor that leads directly to the kitchen. This apartment was in a building built in the 50s, and the kitchen door was old and had become slightly bent. That meant that whenever you turned the doorknob to open the door, it would snap out of its place with a distinct clack sound. That was the sound I had just heard. A lot of thoughts ran through my mind in that moment. Had I dreamt it in my semi-sleeping state? Or maybe the sound was real, but what happened was that the doorknob's internal mechanism broke and it opened by itself. Or, of course, maybe someone was in my house and they had just opened the door. At this point, my heart was racing and I started considering my options. 
I had a broomstick next to my bed. You may ask why I had it there, and to be honest, I had it exactly because I lived alone and thought one day I might be in a situation like this where I would need some type of weapon. My girlfriend even used to joke about it, but I guess that my paranoia was now paying off in the most unfortunate of situations. So I decided I was going to take the stick on one hand and grab my cell phone on the other. I would open my bedroom door while calling 911, and if no one else was in the apartment, I would just apologize to the operator on the other end of the line and explain the situation. However, back in those days my cell phone wasn't yet a smartphone and it had this feature I found interesting, even though I never used it. If you pressed on a couple of specific keys, it would start ringing like someone was calling you. It was meant to be used when you wanted to simulate that you were getting a call to get out of a boring conversation or a tough situation. Clumsily, I pressed on those keys and the phone started ringing. I quickly shut it up, but now it had become clear inside the apartment that I was awake. If someone was outside my bedroom, they certainly heard it, but what was going to happen? I stopped for a few seconds to hear my surroundings. Nothing. It was dead quiet. I decided to continue with my plan. I dialed 911 with one hand, raised the broomstick with the other, and quickly opened the door. As soon as I did that, someone sprinted in front of me in the corridor and quickly got into the kitchen, closing the door behind them. I screamed, hey, and started pursuing, but a split second later I thought, Stop. What if there is someone in the apartment? What if another intruder sneaks up on you from behind? In front of me was the corridor to the kitchen, but on my left was another corridor that led to the living room and office. The office had the light on so the intruder had been there, but I didn't know if he had company. I took a step back into the entrance of my room so that I wouldn't be caught off guard. Sir? Are you there? The 911 operator was calling me on the phone. I quickly explained to him what was happening, gave him my address, and he told me the police were on their way. They had a patrol car nearby, so I should just wait by. And then he hung up. The apartment was dead silent. I was terrified. There were only three things I had been able to notice in the intruder. He had a light-colored sweatshirt with horizontal black lines, dark hair, and he smelled really bad, believe it or not. In fact, the smell was still in the apartment and I could still kind of sense it in my heightened paranoia. The police arrived after seven or eight minutes, what felt like ages. The apartment door was next to the bedroom, so I managed to quickly approach it and lock the door to let them in. I explained what happened to the police and they said that we should go through the whole apartment and check every single hiding place. They had seen situations before where a burglar had hidden himself for a long enough period even after the house owners had called the police, only later to attack them. The apartment wasn't that big so it was easy to conclude that no one else was hiding there. In the kitchen it was obvious what had happened. It had these large windows that faced the back of the building where we had a small community garden. I had left one of the windows open and next to it, on the outside, there was a large drain pipe along the wall. The intruder used that pipe to climb to my window and get in. The police left to go look around the neighborhood for someone matching the description of the sweatshirt I described, and while they were gone, I could still smell that horrible odor the intruder had left in the apartment. After around 20 minutes, they came back. They couldn't find anyone. The burglar was long gone. Luckily, he didn't have the chance to steal anything while he was in my apartment, but the audacity. I mean, he must have seen the light on in my bedroom through the edges of the door and still tried walking past it to steal something from the office. I didn't sleep that night, obviously. In the morning, I went to the garden in the back to try to find any further clues of the intruder, but I couldn't find anything. A neighbor in the building next door was at the window and I called out to her. I told her what had happened and she just smiled and said, Well, Welcome to the neighborhood. We all have stories like that in this place. You should never leave your windows open and maybe you should consider getting some bars to protect them. The next day, I bought a motion alarm and installed it in the kitchen. I never had another experience like that in that apartment, but to be honest, I never slept the same way in that bedroom 
traumatized by those events of that night. At night, I would fear hearing again the sound of the kitchen door snapping out of its place. A few years later, I moved out to a larger apartment in another neighborhood. This time it was on a seventh floor. So much harder for intruders to get in through the windows. My big love bug of a parrot is well trained and I take him out into the world on his harness. He loves it and it's really stimulating and enriching for him. He's really cool, so I don't blame people for it necessarily, but he tends to attract a lot of attention. We live in a small tourist town, so it's not just regulars and locals that I deal with. I never really know what to expect. Most of the time it's harmless, just someone curious about him. I'm pretty socially awkward, and sometimes it's really good for me to talk to the public about him. However, sometimes it puts me in weird, sketchy, uncomfortable situations. It's not uncommon for people to corner me, block my path, or chase me down yelling things like, Excuse me, hey stop, can you stop, come back, I want to see the bird. Please don't do this. The weird ones almost always ask, How much is he worth? And that's a red flag to me, to which I try to change the subject or say something vague. The extra rude ones always keep pushing. Uh, yeah, but how much? Anyway, this one particular day I had enough of the harassment. I wanted a peaceful day out for us, so I walk with my bird to this quieter end of town, usually just the odd local walking by. There's a footpath, a grassy hill, and a beach at the bottom. I'm by myself, so I make sure to have us sit a ways down the grassy hill in a spot where we can see people coming from both directions. We sit down with our smoothie. My bird immediately dives in and starts ripping up the grass. He's in his happy place. I'm hanging out, playing on my phone, playing with my bird and watching my surroundings. I'm thinking, alright, this is great. There's been barely anyone. And those that have walked by haven't really noticed us. We're far enough away from the path for anyone to have to be pretty exceptionally awkward to approach us. They would have to walk well off the path and down the hill to get to us. There's maybe going to be the occasional dog person that walks by. Dogs are meant to be on a leash here, but... I know that people don't always listen, so I stay vigilant. We've got some shade and are happily sharing our smoothie and playing in the grass, and life is good. And then I notice this man walking along the footpath. He has a schnauzer dog, and it's on one of those horrid, retractable leashes that no one ever seems to use correctly, but alas. I notice him, then he notices me. Usually dog people are pretty good about keeping a distance. He walks along, sweet. Then the dog notices us. He runs towards us, to the very end of his retractable leash, and is jerked to a halt at the end, barking savagely. I think, okay, he's going to pull him back. To which he does. Phew. I look away for half a second, and then lets him off the leash. The dog flies down towards us. My bird lets out an alarm call and backs up to me as it happens and I instinctively scoop him up and throw him on my shoulder, standing up and dropping my smoothie in the grass. The dog is leaping at me from uphill, scratching me, all the while barking and acting all savage and inconsolable. Amidst protecting my feathered companion and fighting off this tiny bearded idiot, I manage to utter a, what the F, not cool, get your dog. The man is casually walking towards us laughing hysterically with no intention of stopping the chaos. I'm still being attacked by this vicious little dog, and again I exclaim, Are you kidding me? Get your dog off of me! This one got his attention. What did you just say to my little girl? He says with some accent, maybe German. I said get the effing dog away from us, this isn't funny. He's directly in front of me now, stops laughing. Well, you better watch your mouth, you don't know who you're talking to. He says and proceeds to snatch me by the wrist. Also, please remember the stupid dog is still savagely jumping on me trying to get to my bird. I haven't ever been physically grabbed like that by a stranger, and I yelled louder and more ferociously than I probably ever have at another human. I screamed, get the F off of me, and jerked my arm back. I miraculously break free of his grasp, and as I did, he geared up to backhand me. He took a swing and I leapt back screaming, get away from me. 
You need to take better care of your pet, he says. You have no idea who you are talking to. Thankfully, another old man was walking along the footpath now, came out from the corner and saw the commotion. He immediately ran down and intercepted another swinging backhand coming my way and kicked the dog off of me. The evil old Germanish man continues to threaten me and tells me to take better care of my pet again while the nice man shoos him away. He finally collects his dog and backs off. He slowly trails away, shouting insults and yanking his dog along. The nice man sits with me a minute in the grass until we're sure he's gone. I was shaken up, literally shaking, and he kind of talked me down. It was a stressful walk home alone. I stopped for one and was constantly looking over my shoulder. Luckily, it seems my bird forgot about the whole incident pretty quickly and was back to his cheery little self that evening. I unfortunately was not. It really frightens me going anywhere alone now, and it's safe to say when I do, I'll be putting up with the annoying Taurus from now on. This is a story that happened many years ago when I was around 8 or 9. I'm 43 years old now. My parents and I lived in a very beautiful big old house that used to be a hotel in the 19th century. The house had four extra apartments and in one of them lived this middle-aged guy who we'll call F. The house was placed on a very small but long road that went between fields and a small forest, all of it going downhill before it ended right by the beach. There was maybe 15 houses and only one other kid my age, so I would sometimes visit the adults in the area. There was a few incidents with F, the guy that rented one of the apartments. The first one happened when my friend and I were roller skating and we met F, who was out on his bicycle. We asked him if he would tow us because we were tired and he let us hold onto his bike. At first we thought it was great because not all adults would have been okay with that idea and the ride didn't go very well. Once we held onto the bike, he started going faster and faster, and I mean really fast. It was summertime, and we only had on shorts or skirts, and back then we didn't have a lot of protective gear, so we basically didn't want to fall down. We started out by politely asking him to go slower, but he didn't listen or couldn't hear us at all. Then we started getting near a really big hill where gravity would always make you go way too fast, so there we would always zigzag our way down to make it down safely. At this point, we were screaming at him to stop, but he did the opposite and was standing up on the bike so he could go even faster, and then he told us to let go of the bicycle if we didn't like it. But there was no way we could have done that without falling, and he knew that. Even if he didn't know, he could clearly hear the fear in our voices but he didn't stop before we were a good bit past that hill, and when we confronted him afterwards, he just said he only did what we wanted him to do and that it was our own fault. And the second incident is the real creepy encounter that I had with this guy, but at the time I just thought it was a bit weird. My mother, on the other hand, got really mad, and as an adult, I now understand why. I had met F in the driveway, and he invited me in to get a cup of tea, I remember sitting on his couch and not liking the tea because it had no sugar. When I asked for some, he refused to give me any. Maybe he said he didn't have any, but anyway, I didn't like the tea, and he kind of forced me to drink it anyways, saying how I was the one who wanted it, and now he went through the trouble of making it, and so on. He got kind of mad, so I did what he told me to do because he was an adult and I was only a child. That evening, I told my mom, and she right away took the phone and called him and then she yelled at him for endangering us girls when we were roller skating and got even more angry when she told him to never ever invite me to his apartment, especially to never force her little girl to do anything whatsoever, such as have a drink from a strange person. This could have been the end of the story, but actually I met another guy about 10 years later and he told me that F had informed me that I was the kind of girl that just needed to be cornered and pressured a bit, and then... He could have his way. Thank God my mom stepped in when she did, and it never came to that. A few years ago, I, a 26-year-old female, 
used to work at a job where I usually wouldn't get off until around 11pm. I didn't mind it for the most part. I'm a night owl by nature, but I read a lot of let's not meet stories and watch a lot of horror movies. I wouldn't say I'm paranoid, but I'm definitely cautious. This one particular night I was driving home along one of the main roads. It was late enough that traffic was fairly scarce, but not so late that I felt that I was the only one out, especially because there had been a jeep behind me for a good while at that point. When it came time for me to make my first turn, the jeep followed. This wasn't particularly unusual. I was still on the big road, so I didn't think anything of it. I needed to get gas, and luckily there was a fairly busy and well-lit gas station on my way home. I feel like the layout is important, so bear with me. From the road I was on, you had to turn left onto a side street, and then turn right onto a street that runs parallel with the grocery store, and then turn right again to get into the gas station. It's a very specific destination, and there's no through traffic. When I went to make the first left, the jeep got into the turn lane with me. This is when I started paying attention. They had already been behind me for a good 10 to 15 minutes and it seemed unlikely that they were just coincidentally going to the same gas station as me considering how many there were in that area. But, like I said, there's also a grocery store that's open 24 hours so I thought maybe they were just going there. However, they still followed after me when I turned into the gas station. I pulled up to one of the pumps in the middle of the lane put my car in park and watched the jeep in my rear view. There was no way I was getting out of my car until I figured out what they were doing. If they pulled up to a pump and started getting gas, I'd laugh at myself and carry on. They didn't pull up to a pump. They lurked at the back of the lot, just idling in place for close to a minute, I'd say. Finally, they started slowly driving around the far end of the pumps until they stopped again in front of my car, maybe 15 feet away. Unfortunately, they had tinted windows, so I couldn't see who was in the car or what they were doing, but after another brief period of time, they just drove off. I got gas and drove home, keeping an eye out, but I didn't see them again. Also, I just realized something that honestly made me sick to my stomach. If I hadn't decided to get gas that night, and if they were in fact following me, my next turn would have taken me into a very large, very dark, very empty park. It takes almost five minutes to drive through and has a million speed bumps, so there isn't any quick escape. I hate thinking about what could have happened if I hadn't stopped. In 2016, I had just returned to my home state from college, freshman year, and had gotten an awesome job as a store manager from a local boutique. I loved my job, and even though I had a really young crew, 90% of the time, they worked hard. We were located in an indoor mall and were on the top level. Lots of people used the mall for whatever, walking, window shopping, hanging out, real shopping, etc. And I loved meeting new people, so I honestly enjoyed it. The night it started, I had my favorite two girls with me who were about 17 and 18, and we'll call them A and M. They only worked a few hours a night throughout the week, but they were so sweet and fun to be around. So the night started like any other. A was putting out new stock, M was helping a customer, and I was fixing up the denim wall. My phone rang, and it was my mom, which was weird. She never bugs me during work hours. So I answered and asked what was going on. She replied and told me about how she had just watched this news story about human trafficking taking place around the area of the mall. They had caught a bunch of guys trying to force two girls into their truck and that led them to finding four more girls at a house. She was telling me she just felt like she had to tell me right away so I could keep an eye out but also watch out for younger girls. I remember telling her thank you and I'll call her on my way to my car later. Two hours later, A walks up to me and starts folding pants silently. She's never silent so I asked what's up thinking maybe she didn't feel well. She looked at me and very quietly said, They won't quit staring. It's creeping me out. I looked in the direction she tipped her head towards to find a group of young men, likely late 20s, just standing outside the shopping window staring, pointing and talking to each other. 
I told her I'd keep my eye on them and thank you for telling me. To get both girls out of their eyesight, I sent them to clean up the stock and cruise room in the back. I started doing nightly closing paperwork when one man came in. He looked around a minute and came up to the checkout and asked me why I hadn't greeted him. I said I simply hadn't heard him come in and apologized and asked how I could help him. He ignored my question and asked where the other two girls went. I lied and said that I sent one home and the other was doing inventory in the back and that I'd be happy to help him with whatever he needed. He just stared at me for a minute before simply smiling. Never one to back down. I smiled back and told him if there wasn't anything he needed, I was going to have to ask him to leave as the time was now 9pm and I was closing shop. He didn't move to leave and instead looked down at my name tag. My name is Ren, pronounced like the bird, and what he did next creeped me out and nearly made me sick. He looked me in the eyes, smiled and said, Aren't birds usually kept in cages? Then said that he would see me later, winked, and left. I texted the girls to stay in the back and I called mall security. Luckily I knew the officer they sent and he was a good friend of mine. He came in the back door and I explained everything. I had him walk them out to their cars immediately one at a time and he came back to get me. I was finishing paperwork. He was standing next to me when he told me not to look up. I asked him why, not once, stopping my work. He told me that they were walking by outside the shop front again. They freaking waved to the security officer. He told me to just finish up and he'd get me to my car. We were one of the last shops open, so I finished around 10pm and then had the security officer walk me out the back way into my car. He told me to get in and lock my doors. He actually followed me out to the highway to make sure that I wasn't followed. I learned later, two other officers had done the same for my girls. I talked to my mom the entire drive home. I got home safe and immediately called A&M and they were home safe as well. And I felt so much better knowing that. I told them that they were going to take the next few days off and then would go to our sister's store the town over for a few weeks. And next I called my district manager and other store manager and explained what had happened. I was sent to a different store as well and it ended there luckily. But I have never been so creeped out and worried for my co-workers lives as that night. This happened around 2003 when I was 12 or 13 years old. My mom had chosen to homeschool me that year and for some reason had also tasked me with walking my younger sister, about 9 or 10 at the time, to school. The walk was just shy of a mile each way. We lived in a very safe, smallish suburb, so I generally felt fine walking around by myself with my younger siblings. On this morning, about two blocks into the walk, I noticed a large, older red van parked on a road next to us idling with an older man, maybe in his 50s or 60s, in the driver's seat staring at us. He looked like a creepy Mr. Clean, I guess. I didn't get a good feeling, but he was parked, so we just kept walking and didn't think anything of it. We walked a few more blocks to another residential area, closer to her school, and noticed the same red van was now parked on the opposite side of the street. The street wasn't deserted or anything since the school was pretty close at that point, so we just kept walking and, much to my dismay, the van kept creeping closer to the school also. Driving and parking, driving and parking, every other block or so. Once we get to the school, I walk her to her classroom and then leave to start walking back home. I had somewhat forgotten about the van, until about a block into my walk home I see it parked just ahead. At this point, I realized I can no longer justify this as a coincidence. I felt that I was in legitimate danger. I don't have a cell phone, and the streets are now empty because everyone is either at school or work. Looking back, I should have just returned to the school, but that didn't cross my mind at the time. I walk quickly and notice that he is now following me, slowly. I start changing up my route. I quickly make a turn I don't need to make in hopes of throwing him off, only to find that he drove back around to cut me off at the end of the street. I'm now terrified and start sprinting as fast as I can. 
He starts driving slightly faster behind me, clearly staring directly at me. I keep running and duck into an alley with apartment garages in it. I see him looking from where I went and then driving up the block in the hopes that I went that way. I start running through apartment complexes instead of taking the normal street because I know if he catches me, I'm done. I was a small child. No way I would have been able to defend myself. Finally, I'm able to make it to my street using my apartment complex hopping strategy. I see him at the intersection at the end of my block, but he hasn't turned yet. I sprint across the street as fast as I can and run into my open garage, shutting it immediately. Once I realize I'm safe, I start uncontrollably sobbing. My mom emerges and doesn't understand why I'm upset. She didn't see the danger in the situation that I saw. I still ask that we call the police, but they said they couldn't do anything about it since technically nothing had happened at all. And I still think about that day often, even after 19 years. This happened five years ago, when I was 19 and living with my parents. We had a new neighbor who was super strange. She would watch us through her curtains and then quickly close them and run away, or she would stand outside smoking cigarettes and just stare at her house from her patio until we made eye contact, after which she would just run inside. My parents started to leave for one to two weeks at a time to go check out houses three hours away since my dad got a promotion and I would stay in our old house. I would still catch the neighbors staring at her house, but I was used to it by then. Oddly though, I started to feel super uneasy at night like I was being watched for whatever reason, but I figured it was just nerves from being alone. One night in particular, I felt extremely uncomfortable. Like, I really felt like someone was watching me and I couldn't sleep, so I called my boyfriend at the time and asked him to come over. He said no because he didn't want to drive, so... I went around the house and turned on a ton of lights and also barricaded any entrances and slept with a kitchen knife close by. I know that sounds extra, but I was scared. I did that for two or more days until my parents came back. When my parents came home, I explained what happened and they thought I was just being paranoid. My dad started on some yard work, but then came into my room with my mom and angrily asked me if I had started smoking. I was shocked and said, of course I haven't. My bedroom window looks out into our yard, and my dad said that right next to my window, there was lipstick-covered cigarettes stuffed under the siding of the house. Obviously, we all had a pretty good guess of who it was, and my parents then installed cameras. Our neighbor watched them be put in, and she stayed away after that, besides staring through her curtains. And when we moved shortly afterwards, my parents picked a house that gave us more privacy and installed the cameras on the new house too. I still think it's super freaky and I will never doubt my intuition like that again. This happened four years ago when my boyfriend and I were still sort of fresh into the relationship. My sister had recommended me a snorkeling trip for a fun thing to do with him. It was this quarry surrounded by a campground that is filled with water and it's known for its crystal clear water and its diving. There's apparently a helicopter and school bus that people dive down to see. My boyfriend and I decided to go camping for the night. While we were checking in, we separately both got a bad feeling about the place but had kept it to ourselves until after we left. So at first it was a really good time. We snorkeled in this shallowish area of the quarry and although the depth of the water was a bit uncanny, I still was enjoying myself. The water is 65 feet deep so once you had swam out of the shallow area, it immediately dropped off and it was pitch black. This is actually where I realized that I'm terrified of water. Besides the dark deep water while we're swimming, there's something very scary about a lake that is perfectly still. I assume because it's a quarry, the water doesn't really have any sort of current. My boyfriend and I are winding down our night, and we're back at our campsite. We're camping in a grassy patch down a hill from the road. Our tent is pitched in a wooded area that our campsite is extended to, and just across the green is a campsite that looks well lived in, but our neighbors were out. 
We're making hot dogs over the fire when our neighbors get back. It's nighttime now and they immediately go to sleep. I'd say 20 to 30 minutes after they get back is when things started to become spooky. My boyfriend and I were chatting when we noticed a dark figure watching us from the hill. Because of the shadow of the fire, we couldn't actually make out the characteristics of the figure. We knew that he was staring directly at us, almost hiding behind our neighbor's truck. He had watched us for what felt like forever until he started walking down the road again. We both watched him in dead silence, watching him walk behind the trees, the same ones connected to our campsite but that also went in between us and him. I anticipated each time that I'd see him walk forward, out from behind a tree. It was a good four or five he came out from. It wasn't until after this I noticed that he had stopped walking, or he was behind the tree still. I was totally freaked out. Where did he go? I watched my boyfriend looking at what happened and thinking the same thing, but he had shrugged it off and I naively did too. We actually ended up forgetting about it and went back to the quarry late at night. It was beautiful seeing the stars reflected against the water, but the deep, now completely black water was terrifying to say the least. We walked back to our campsite, lied in our tent, and smoked a joint. I soon began to feel an uneasy feeling which I was trying to ignore, telling myself it's just because I was paranoidly high. After some silence between us, my boyfriend says to me, Do you feel like we're being watched? I said, Why would you say that? Half joking, but full serious that I was scared. My boyfriend wanted to get out from the tent, so we're standing by my car, and I got this stupid idea that being in the middle of the field that's in the middle of the campground is the safest place for us. My logic being, if someone was going to come up to us, at least we'd be able to see them. So, we're in the middle of this field when we see a similar looking shadow figure from earlier staring at us. He must have been about 20 yards away. We both notice him while walking, and he's walking in the same direction as us. We change directions, and so does he. We tell one another if we change again, he does too, that we're booking it to my car. When we change, he follows and we book it to the car. I watched him from my seat as he slowly walked back into the darkness while still staring into our direction. My boyfriend at this point says to me, let's get out of here. I agree, but all our camping gear is outside. We quietly get our things together, not trying to freak the other one out. The weirdest part of this story, in my opinion, is the next part. My headlights weren't working, and there was a weird fog over my windshield that didn't go away no matter what we did. We had to drive out of the woods with only low beams and a strange fog over the window. We barely could see, but did get out of there. Weirdly enough, the fog went away right as soon as we got to the gas station. We got home at around 1 at night. I told my father the story the next day, and he said that he's glad that we got out of there or else we potentially could have got murdered, he thinks. Two people have died at this campground while snorkeling, which I find out after I got back. My boyfriend and I think it was either a person trying to kill us or, who knows, maybe the Wendigo. We've kind of settled on the Wendigo because what happened to us was just almost too freaky to think about. I had lived in the same apartment complex for two years, and across from me was my neighbor Sam. He seemed like a normal guy and a single father of three. Over the two years I lived there, we had engaged in small talk many times, and I believed he was a nice person. He felt like a father figure since he's twice my age and always seemed willing to help out if I needed it. Last summer, my region experienced an insane heat wave that we simply didn't have the infrastructure to deal with. It's common for apartments and homes in general in the northern United States to not have air conditioning. Temperatures were aiming to reach over 100 degrees and without AC we all would have had to prepare to basically endure 90 plus degree heat in our homes with no relief. I had purchased a portable AC unit and me being from the southern United States I didn't have the slightest clue how to set it up and all online advice was only useful for windows that slid vertically. I had a unique dilemma given that my window slides open horizontally. After struggling with the air-conditioned vent for a while, I decided to knock on my neighbor's door for help. That 
turned out to be a big mistake. After leaving my apartment, he started sending text messages that made me feel quite uneasy. The first message was something along the lines of, I could tell we were nervous around each other. I'm shy. What are you up to tonight? I was honestly grossed out and disturbed by that because it seemed delusional. I wasn't nervous around him at all because I'm simply not attracted to him yet in his mind I was nervous. I didn't reply. He proceeded to text me and call me every day and was even leaving voicemails. He even blew me a kiss in one of the voice messages. I was starting to get scared because normal people don't continue to call and text someone that's not responding to them yet this guy wouldn't leave me alone. I figured if he was this unhinged, then outright rejecting him and telling him I wasn't interested could possibly be dangerous, so I continued to ignore him. If I was coming home at night, I always had a friend on the phone with me in case I bumped into him. I was becoming so on edge by all the unwanted contact, I called my cousin, who was a lawyer, to tell him everything that was going on. He asked me for my neighbor's full name. After looking him up, he found out that my neighbor was a felon and actually on an offender's list. He had been in prison for five years for assaulting a 12-year-old girl. He was also able to find out that my neighbor had been arrested back in 1988 for armed burglary. These are just the times that he'd been caught. I searched for a new apartment and the one with the earliest vacancy would be three weeks out and I had to wait. I went to the leasing office of my then current apartment and told them everything that was going on and opted to break my lease and move out as soon as the new apartment was available. I'm so grateful I had a male friend over this particular night. The vent for my portable AC had fallen out of the window and I was fiddling with it and trying to get it to sit tight like it was before. While doing so, I got another text and was my neighbor. It said, I see you. You're looking really good today. Would you like some help? Upon reading that, I realized that he must have been outside and watching me in my window. I was shaking with fear. My friend saw how scared I was, and when I told him what happened, he went downstairs to confront Sam, pretend to be my boyfriend, and told him to stop texting me. I was so shaken up, I called out of work and booked the next flight to my home state to wait the remaining three weeks out at my best friend's apartment, far away from the creepy neighbor. I wasn't even going to allow any possibility for things to escalate further. Fast forward three weeks, I had hired movers to get all my stuff out of my old apartment. I was cleaning out the fridge and the neighbor and I ended up coincidentally leaving our apartments at the same time. When we made eye contact, he licked his lips. So this happened a few months back when I was 20 and still living in Denver. It was about 8.45 at night on a weekday and I was walking back to my house from the bus stop which was only about a 5-10 to 10 minute walk depending on my pace. I had my headphones on because I hadn't removed them when I got off the bus. The street was completely empty and quiet so I'm being mindful to check my surroundings, turning the volume down on my headphones and trying to walk as quietly as possible to hear if anyone comes up behind me. The walk is pretty uneventful. This is until I glance behind me for about the 20th time since I started walking and notice a car slowly turning onto the street I'm on. At first, I'm not really put off by it since I know that one of my neighbors that lives further down the block usually gets home right around the same time that I'm coming up on her house. So I keep walking but I turn my headphones off and tug them down around my neck before pulling my phone out in case I need to make an emergency call. I'm walking for another 30 seconds when I realize that the car still hasn't passed me, so of course I glance behind me again to see where it's gone, and find that it's pulled up to the curb a little way behind me, just idling. At this point I'm a little nervous, so I quicken my pace since I'm now only a block away from my house. I keep glancing behind me, taking note that a I haven't heard any car doors close, which means no one has gotten out of the car. I try to tell myself that nothing is wrong and that the person is probably just taking a phone call or looking for directions. About another minute passes and then I hear the car coming up behind me. It's driving slowly, way slower than the speed limit and rumbles past me at the same pace. I glance over as it does and 
see that there's three men inside and all three of them are looking right at me. Immediately, warning bells start going off and I unlock my phone, pulling up my mom's contact so I can call her right away, if needed. At this point, I'm literally four houses down from my own and I think I'm in the clear when it looks like the car is going to continue on its way down the rest of the street, except it doesn't. It pulls up to the curb about 20 feet from where I am. Normally, this wouldn't be a problem, but they pulled the car so close to the curb that the front and back tires on the right side are basically up on the sidewalk, which means I'd have to walk onto the grass or brush against their car as I pass. Immediately, I'm like, nope, and I abruptly cross the street before calling my mom, even though I'm literally two houses away from my own. I'm watching the car as the phone rings, and I notice that the guys are looking at the sidewalk where I was just moments before, like they're waiting for me to pass. I can see the guy in the back seat craning his neck to look out the back window. It takes a second, but they realize that I'm no longer there and start to frantically look around for me. The driver spots me across the street, and I make a point to show him that I'm on the phone. He says something to his mates before abruptly spinning the car around and taking off down the street. I hang up the phone and cross the street to my house in a hurry. I tell my mom what happened when I get inside, but she just scoffs and says that they probably just wanted to ask for directions. I recently went to Peru, my first time out of the country, and had already had sketchy experiences my first couple of days there. My friend and I were staying at a hostel, and she didn't tell me the bathrooms were co-ed until she mentioned running into a guy at the showers. Essentially, it was a large open-air room with the left side for men and the right side for women. But nothing locked, and they were joined by a set of sinks and had only curtains for privacy. I waited until it was late and quiet in the hostel, thinking I could quickly shower. At the time, I thought the shower portion itself had a lock. It turned out either to be broken or non-existent. But in for a penny, in for a pound, I was seemingly alone, and it was then or never. No sooner had I turned the shower on and undressed did I hear a pair of men enter the bathroom talking. The men seemed to pause, and I understood them to be saying in Spanish something like, someone's in there, in the shower. The only thing separating me from them was about eight feet of curved walkway, a bathroom stall door I had opened all the way to offer some fox protection, and the broken screen that was stuck open a few inches. So essentially nothing was stopping them from walking over, seeing me, or coming right in. I didn't have signals, so I hadn't brought my cell phone. The men had gotten closer talking and I was worried that they would come in. I threw my dress back on and pressed against the side of the little shower area so that they wouldn't see me right away if they peeked in. One of the men seemed to leave and I heard the other one walk around to the men's side. Again, this is one large room with adjoining sets of toilets and showers. The ceiling was open air. We were not physically far apart. The man began softly crooning to me what seemed to be in a Spanish romance song. I wasn't focused on translating amidst panicking. He went on for a while while I stood there hiding, terrified he was going to come in and well aware I couldn't leave without going past him. Eventually he stopped singing and left and I started crying at that point as the adrenaline gave way to relief. I have PTSD and I have been in and had family in terrible situations and I had been genuinely afraid in that moment. It might seem funny to some of you looking back, but I was stuck in a bathroom in a foreign country with a man who realized a woman, presumably showering without clothes on, was present, who couldn't leave without passing him, and he decided to stand there and sing at her. You're not romantic. You're creepy. When I was 18, I moved to live with my dad. He lived in the basement level apartment in a pretty run-down small city. It's kind of notorious for being a dangerous place. I'd heard gunshots on occasion and passed by used syringes like they were cigarette butts. A lot of weird and creepy things happened to me and around me while I lived out there. 
but I'll stick to one story that came to mind. I had gotten in the habit of walking around town aimlessly. It was a means of occupying myself and exploring the sights. I could get cool pictures of graffiti, and since I wasn't in school or working at the time, it was its own means to an end. But there was one night where I had strayed a little too far and was coming up on the rail tracks. There was a group of three of what I assume were homeless-looking individuals walking towards me. I meant to pass them, trying to avoid eye contact, but I peeked up and I noticed the older woman in the middle of two unkempt-looking men staring at me. Looking me dead in the eyes, the woman stopped and said my name. It was clear, and almost friendly, but incredibly creepy. I kept walking instinctively, but I couldn't get it out of my head. I tried thinking like maybe she said a word that sounded like my name, but I have a pretty unique name to begin with. The fact that she was staring at me, I don't know, it was like she knew me. It didn't help that the railroad was next to the town cemetery. I'm a sort of want-to-believe type person, even though I usually don't, but that experience, as minor as it was, had me chilled to the bone. Strange things were happening to me a lot when I lived in that city, and now that I'm removed from it, it's easier to write off. But a big part of me thinks there's something about that place that isn't entirely normal. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all of these stories in big compilations and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, the Chalupa Cabra is on sale at Taco Bell.